and welcome to the SWBN News Watch, where we report global events from a Christian perspective. I am Chimila Chiki. Thanks for joining us today on our weekly rundown. So these are the major stories that made it to our table. Stay with us. In a recent event, the president of the Evangelical Church winning all, Equa, Reverend Stephen Panya, debunked allegations that the church forcefully converted 21 Muslims to Christianity and held them hostage in their just facility. As we understand, the Department of State Services, DSS, visited the Equa headquarters following a report from the Jamaatul Nasril Islam that alleged that the church was holding 21 Muslims against their will. Several media agencies carried stories alleging that the DSS stormed Equa and rescued the Ahmadiyya's. But at, at the time of this report, the DSS was yet to make any statement. However, Panya stated that the report was false, misleading, and a deliberate effort to discredit the church and cause a religious crisis. We were able to obtain the official press release from their Facebook page here. The Evangelical Church winning all Equa reported the allegations in a statement signed by the Equa president. The president wrote that, and I quote, among numerous Equa units is the Equa Discipleship Unit established under the Equa Church Related Ministries uh, Department of the Headquarters. The unit, among other activities, trains the less privileged in the society for capacity building, skill acquisition, Christian ethics, and leadership skills with the sole purpose of making them relevant to the society. Unquote. Paya explained that due to a lack of space at the Equa headquarters, the office acquired a private property within Tundu Water res residential area in Joss as a temporary site for the training for the training and housing of all trainees. Trainees at the facility as a matter of policy are all adults with none falling below 18 years of age. They are free to withdraw from the training once they are dissatisfied with either the policies or the condition of the facility. Management also has the right to withdraw a trainee on grounds of infringement of the rules and regulation of the facility. Meanwhile, Guardian gathered that the unit from inception, from inception has graduated over 86 trainees from across the country. However, the president noted that, quote, the Equa Church Related Ministries Department was shocked over the false allegations said to have emanated from the alleged escapee Abdurrahman Husseini that the trainees at the property were forcefully brought to it for the purpose of forcefully converting them to Christianity. These allegations are complete falsehood because the trainees, being persons of age, are available at any time for government officials to interact with to hear their respective stories, just as was done by the DSS recently, end of quote. Equa has emphasized that any other insinuations or accusations such as have been made viral on the media space are fabricated lies to dent the good works of Equa since the past 129 years of its existence. Moving on, the Premier Christian News has reported that Pope Francis implicitly accused Russia of armed conquest, expansionism and imperialism in Ukraine, calling the conflict a cruel and senseless war of aggression. The Pope, speaking to a delegation of Orthodox leaders from the Istanbul-based Ecumenical Patriarchate, said the conflict had pitted Christians against one another. Still quoting the Premier Christian News, both Russia and Ukraine are predominantly Orthodox Christians, but there is an influential Byzantine right Catholic minority in Ukraine that owes its allegiance to the Pope. The eastern and western branches of Christianity separated in the Great Schism of 1054. However, the Pope said, and I quote, Reconciliation among separated Christians as a means of contributing to peace between peoples in conflict is in most timely consideration these days as our world is disrupted by a cruel and senseless war of aggression in which many and many Christians are fighting one another. The Pope also told his Orthodox visitors in a clear reference to Russia that all needed to recognize that armed conquest, expansionism and imperialism have nothing to do with the kingdom that Jesus Christ proclaimed. End of quote. He went on to condemn the bombing of a crowded shopping center in the city of Kremenchuk 
calling it the latest in a string of barbarous attacks against uh, Ukraine. A new source says uh, the Ukraine war has caused deep divisions among world orthodoxy. The patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, ROC, Kirill, has given his full-throated blessing to Moscow's invasion of Ukraine since it began on February 24, 2022. His position has splintered the worldwide Orthodox Church and unleashed an internal rebellion which has led to some local Orthodox churches once linked to the ROC to severe ties. Moreover, Russian President Vladimir Putin, a member of the ROC, has described Moscow's action in Ukraine as a special military operation aimed at demilitarizing and denazifying the country. The Pope has rejected such terminology and was scolded by the ROC for saying that the patriarch of the ROC, Kirill, cannot become Putin's altar boy. In the United States, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert is facing backlash after she said that the reason the United States is having so many overreaching regulations is because the church complied. She said this while speaking at Cornerstone Christian Center in Basalt, Colorado. The Christian headlines quote Boebert as telling the congregation that the church is supposed to direct the government. Watch. The reason we had so many overreaching regulations in our nation is because the church complied. The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the constitution. It was in a stinking letter and it means nothing like what they say it does. Meanwhile, Petra takes criticized the remarks, calling it Christian nationalism. In a tweet, the group went on to call for support in monitoring the right wing. Uh, still on this, uh, the Christian headline says uh, the letter Bobert was referring to was written by the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, an address to the Danbury Baptist Association over the group's concerns about religious liberty. In that letter, Jefferson is quoted to have said that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, and that the American people declare that the legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Thus, are building a wall of separation between church and state. While the phrase separation of church and state is not written in the Constitution, the concept is widely believed by many to be rooted in the First Amendment Establishment Clause, which prohibits the government from establishing an official national religion or creating laws that explicitly favor or benefit one religion. Bobert is up for re-election this November challenged churches across the United States for not taking a stand against government regulations during the COVID-19 pandemic, including restrictions on in-person church services. The Republican Congresswoman contended that the nation is not meant to have its liberties restricted. In Nigeria, proceedings at a magistrate's court sitting in Opoko, Ogari local government area, a number of states was forced to halt as an on nature based lawyer identified as Ogba Chalu Abuchi Goshen appeared in court dressed in Christian clerical robes. The court presided by her worship, C.B. Mbegu, was progressing smoothly until a matter was called up and Abuchi announced appearance as defense counsel keated as a priest with long crucifix, Roman collar, and a stole around his neck. In a news report, Sun News Online has it that when the magistrate objected to him appearing and addressing the court in such regalia, Abuchi objected, citing the recent Supreme Court judgment that gave female students the backing to wear hijab, a Muslim head cover, to public schools as his authority. As the magistrate stood her ground that he cannot appear in her court dressed as a priest, Abuchi also insisted that the objection by the magistrate was an infringement on his fundamental rights as enshrined in the Section 38 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
As the argument continued with both the magistrate and the lawyer refusing to shift grounds, the atmosphere in the court became charged and the magistrate rose abruptly from her seat, forcing the court to dismiss for the day. Other lawyers and people who came for different matters filed outside as the magistrate entered a car and drove off. Meanwhile, Sahara reporters quote the lawyer as saying that the court needs to answer what its position would be if it were a female Muslim lawyer who entered the court in a hijab. He further noted that he is an ordained pastor and which I should also be allowed to appear that way in court since the Supreme Court's decision on the hijab matter is that it is allowed. When asked if the uh, Supreme Court ruling is in the best interest of the judiciary, he said that for now, it remains a precedent that must be obeyed unless there is a judicial review. And that will be all for this edition of the SWBN News Watch. Thank you so much for staying with us. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. God bless you.